Hey friends. So a few weeks ago, we had one of the most popular crypto exchanges, FTX, file bankruptcy. In turn, something really interesting had happened. There was a lawsuit, not just against FTX, but also against many of the influencers that have been involved with promoting FTX, including Tom Brady, Stephen Curry, Naomi Osaka, Shaquille O'Neal, Shohei Otani, Larry David, and Kevin O'Leary. After digging into what had happened, yes, this was more than written in the walls. Leadership in the company bought homes for advisors in the organization, and a lot of haughty VCs had quickly valued FTX at billions of dollars without really doing the due diligence needed. First thing is I was really bullish in this industry in crypto in about 2015, 2016. Then just over time, it's really devolved into uh, the wild, wild west. A lot of scams happening and a lot of people just losing money. If we think about exchanges in the past, Mt. Gox, for example, was the reason why a lot of people lost money in the very early days of cryptocurrencies. What we're seeing still is a lack of laws and policies that help protect the consumer. The second part is in terms of just looking at all the ideas and features and things coming out of the Web3 space and blockchain space. Honestly, it's not very equitable from the teams that create the technologies comprised of mostly white men to a lot of the technologies just institutionalizing ableism. Can you imagine yourself being 80, 90 years old, utilizing this technology? I think one can say that there's a lot of room for improvement before we can really say that this is for everyone. And the part that I want to highlight that is really the most important part of this conversation is around the rise of influencers. I wrote posts about it on social media about how with the rise of technology and automation and this disconnection to each other we have this desire to still be connected to other humans and so influencers take that place of being that person that we're connected to even though really all we did was take that connection away from the people we care and love most brands love influencers they are able to get the niche reach, the audience, and they're able to put a face to the brand. And then influencers love brands, primarily due to financial kickbacks, leverage their community, their connections, and their face. The industry is continuing to rise based on a statistic from Statista. The influencer marketing industry has risen about 33% since 2020. And it looks like it's going to still continue to rise, at least for the time being. Not only is the space getting more popular and more lucrative, you see people also gaining more power in the space. The ability to influence people, the ability to influence communities. You see beauty influencers helping big beauty brands dictate their next product launches, their collaborations. We see influencers directly talking to social media platforms themselves to dictate what new features are getting announced and iterated on. And influencers are regularly invited to the White House for special briefings. We can clearly see that as we have more influencers gaining popularity and power and influence, that they start making decisions that impact not just our community, but all of us. With this, we see a lot of also inequitable relationships, partnerships being developed with influencers and brands, particularly because of the financial kickback on both sides. And in the instance with FTX, we saw a lot of these partnerships luring consumers into spending their whole entire portfolio and investing into cryptocurrencies. And we also see this percolating to many other industries that are predatorial, including the buy now, pay later trend, including brands such as Klarna or Afterpay with influencers such as Bretman Rock and all of these glittery drag queens to make the brand more palatable, more fun, more exciting. But at the end of the day, this is hurting our 
younger generations. In a recent report by SF Gate, they reported about 43% of people enrolling in these activities were missing a payment. And with interest rates from 20 to 30% plus, that's a lot of money that we're expecting people to pay on the back of these entertaining commercials. As brands are getting litigated in the future, I reckon the litigation against influencers will also increase, and with that holding parties responsible and accountable for their actions and how they impact their communities at large. What we have to do, especially as consumers, is to take a look at not only the way we consume brands, but also the way we consume influencers as well. Are they ethical? Are they equitable? in the partnerships and dealings with the outside world. And in the case of FTX, actions speak louder than words. Unfortunately, the influencers have not really taken accountability for their actions, leading to a lot of people having lost a ton of money. But more will probably be revealed as these lawsuits go through. To wrap up, a couple tips and some thoughts. The first one is as you take a look at your influencers that you're following, how equitable are they? How aligned are they with your values? There are some really nifty websites such as Goods Unite Us, where you can type in the name of the companies and take a look at their financial contribution for different political parties. You can simply do a bunch of research and start seeing some brands and seeing who is affiliating with which brand. And that takes me to point number two, which is when brands show you who they are, are these influencers taking accountability for their relationship with these brands and are they walking away? At the end of the day, money is a choice and ultimately we can't create a sustainable, equitable future if we are leveraging inequitable partnerships and products to pave the way. And lastly, birds of a feather flock together. The more we amplify brands and influencers that are great for the world and great for our communities, we in turn will see them also amplifying other brands and influencers who are doing great by our communities and our planet at large. This industry is going to continue to grow and with that we're going to see a lot of growing pains, especially as we don't even have laws and don't even have policies around this yet. As we talk about influencers, something that we always forget is the fact that, especially for those who are really big, they're actually companies themselves with an entire team behind it. It's not just one person making a decision, but it's a collective of decisions being made. And as a part of it, I think if we're gonna hold companies responsible, we should also hold these influencers accountable and responsible for their behaviors and actions as well. And so with that, Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.